Do your edges look like that? I didn't think so. Let's fix that. So in this series, we're going to cover how to get that perfect edge finish. If this is your first time here, my name is Justin, and I run a company called Norfolk Handmade. We specialize in small batch, private label leather goods. So in this video, we're actually going to cover exactly how to apply your specific edge treatment. I'm going to show you the three different methods that I've used and the one I currently use and the one I like most today. Stick around to the end. I'm also going to show you my favorite tool for polishing the token all once it's applied. So if you need any of the tools or materials listed in this video, check the description below. Everything's listed there in the links. So for me, without a doubt, tokenol is the best product to use to get a really nice edge finish. So that is what's in these two jars, just 100% straight tokenol. So method number one, tokenol in a jar. This is as straightforward as you get. Dip your finger, apply it to the edge, just dab it in until it's nice and even so that you can't see any of the tokenol anymore. Obviously, this is a fairly straightforward method. You can apply as much or as little tokenol as you want, and it's going to do the job. Method number two is using these little squeeze bottles that have a felt applicator tip. So again, this is fairly straightforward. The, bo the bottle is filled with 100% tokenol. Just squeeze it onto the edge and then rub it in. Again, very straightforward method, nothing too fancy. It gets the job done. And then finally, you can use one of these poly brushes, dip it in your tokenol, and then apply it to the edge. Again, fairly straightforward method, just as easy as the other two methods. So which one do I like best? So pros and cons of using your hands. Uh, one, you don't need any extra tools. They're built in, hopefully, most of them, at least one, that's all you need. Number two, you have a lot of control over how much product you're applying to the edge. So if it's the first application token all, you can apply it pretty heavy, let it soak in, brush it out. And if it's a final application, you can use just a small amount to get that final polish. The problems with this method, well, one is also the benefit is that you got to use your hands. So. This method can be extremely messy and you have to be very careful with excess tokenol on your hand, getting on parts of the leather you don't want it on. The other con is sometimes it's hard to control how much tokenol you're actually gonna get. You dab a little too much, then you gotta get it off your finger, then you're kind of wasting it because then it dries on the side of the bottle and there is actually a little bit less control than other methods. Keen observers are going to notice that the pros and the cons are basically canceling each other out. That's been my experience, which is why I don't use this method anymore. Figured I'd clarify that. Back to the video. Method number two, the squeeze bottle. So a huge benefit with this method is the ease of use when applying your tokenol. Obviously being in a squeeze bottle, it applies very evenly and you know exactly how much tokenol you're gonna get. Another pro is that it's also very clean because everything's contained within the bottle and the actual applicator controls how much tokenol is coming out of the bottle. One con to this method is that the end can sometimes get all gummed up and you'll have to replace this tip after a period of use. So you could consider this a bit of a wear item. It's gonna require some maintenance. The other con is when this tip does get clogged up, it takes more work for the tokenol to come out of the bottle, which means you have less control and it can be frustrating. And then finally our poly brush. So a pro with this one is that it keeps your hands clean because you're using an applicator to apply the tokenol. Number two, it's also very precise. You can get exactly the amount of tokenol you want, either on the flat bit, or you can just use the corners if you're working in really tight, small areas. One con to use in these is that you do have to practice a little bit because you're working with a little narrow tip and your edge, in some cases, may be pretty thin. You do have to make sure you're dabbing the end of your brush on the edge and you don't slip and actually touch the outside face of your leather piece. Another con is that over time, the tokenol will harden up and create a crusty edge. So again, just like the bottle, this is a wear item that you're gonna have to replace. So the method that I'm using right now is a poly brush. Here's why I'm using this one. One, I really like the precise control that you have with just using the tip of the brush and get it right on that edge. And then with the side of the brush, I can rub in that tokenol. These are also incredibly cheap. You can get them in the link below or you can get them at any dollar store or hardware store 
they're basically available anywhere. So they are certainly not an expensive tool in comparison to the results that they're going to give you. Okay, so those are three methods that you can use to apply your token all. But once you have it applied, how do you polish it? There's two main tools that you can use to polish in the token all once it's on your edge. And those are wood bits, either manual or one designed for your Dremel, or you can use some sort of canvas cloth. Okay, these wooden bits, some people like them. I don't like them at all. Here's why. So in my experience, using the leathers that I work with, which are all high quality Italian veg tan or shell cordovan, I personally find that these wood bits roll over the edge, creating a lip that you can't remove with an edge beveler. I've tried techniques using very light pressure, heavy pressure, never seems to get the proper polish the way using a canvas cloth does. There could be other ones out there that aren't made of wood. They may work better. Your results may vary. I personally don't like these ones. What I prefer to use is a thicker 10 ounce natural cotton canvas. I find this has just enough texture to it to really help polish in that token all when your final sanding is all done. Another really affordable option is what's called muslin. You can get this at any fabric store. This stuff is incredibly cheap, much, much thinner, but it's also very good because the texture in here is a little bit finer than a rough cotton canvas. In some applications, I find this actually works better for that final polish. If you really want to get a nice polish and you want to step it up even more, you can try finishing it off with a microfiber cloth. I find on some leathers, this actually really brings up a nice polish on other leathers. It doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. Finally, if you want to go that extra mile, you go for a nail polishing block. Now this one has a normal side. This is just the material it's made of, this kind of foam. And then it's got a super fine grit, an even finer grit. And then I've added this yellow bit, which is made for polishing metals. So this is extremely fine. If you're doing an edge challenge, get yourself a nail polishing block with super fine grits. That's going to take you to the next level. So those are the tools that I'm using to get a nice polished edge. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you do anything different, let me know. If you have any questions about the tools that I'm using, let me know. If I get enough questions that are similar, I'll put together a Q&A video that will be released later. Again, if you need any of the tools or materials that you've seen in this video, check the description below. I have links to everything I use. And all those links are affiliate links, so I do get a very small percentage if you use those links to buy any of these products. If you found this video helpful and you've watched a bunch of my videos before, or if this is your first video, please consider subscribing. It, it helps out the channel incredibly. You have no idea. Like it, leave a comment, share it if it's extremely helpful, or if you think your other leatherworking friends could benefit from it. Also, head over to my website, norfolkhandmade.com, and check out everything I've got going on over there. You can also follow me on Instagram for daily updates. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.